good. All right, guys, now listen here. It is a hot and muggy day in the bluegrass, but I got a good drill for you. Now, I've been doing these labs and some other puppies here, and I know it's been a while since I had you a good protection dog video, but I think you're going to like this one. This is an exercise we do to, to, to kind of develop and maintain control of a dog once we get them to where they're doing some pretty decent bite work. Now what you have to understand is these dogs, these high drive dogs, when you're increasing their desire to bite and you're doing a lot of bite work, sometimes as that desire to bite increases, your control decreases. So this is a little exercise we do with them on a fairly regular basis just to keep them under control. Okay, so I drove me a post in the ground, and I've got a tether. Now, I'm going to take this tether, I'm going to stretch it out, and I'm going to make a circle, and I'm going to mark the outer limits of that circle with cones. Okay, now, so that lets me know exactly what would happen if my dog was to break a sit. Okay, in this particular scenario, we're going to be working a mom getting in a uh, car or fooling with a baby carriage scenario, right? Okay, so imagine my assistant has went to the park or went to the grocery store, and she's fooling around with her baby, and someone comes up and attacks her. Now, you know, that part of it's great, and that part of it's pretty easy to get. The part that's not easy to get is when you go out with your baby, there's a lot of crazy characters in the world. So your dog can't just be defending you against everyone. Your dog can only defend you against people that are overtly aggressive, that are, that are for sure 100% intent on causing you physical harm. Now, so when we have our agitators out here, we have them, they're going to be sauntering around, looking a little bit strange, kind of glancing over the shoulder at the dog and, 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 and looking at Callie. You know how people that, you know, up to no good do. Now, what will happen sometimes when you first start getting these dogs excited is they're going to break. Like you're going to have them by your baby stroller or you're going to have them by your car and they're going to break. Well, now what this tether is going to do is this tether is going to keep the dog from being rewarded for breaking. Sometimes when a dog is dirty, when they're doing bite work, and what they mean is they steal a bite, you know, sometimes that dog, just getting up there and getting a good nip on the suit or getting a good nip on the sleeve, to that dog it's worth it to get corrected. It's worth it to get fussed at. So what we, we don't do it like that. What we do is we borrow a concept from field trial based on denials. I'm actually going to have my agitator outside the tether distance, okay? And he's going to be walking around and walking around and walking around. If the dog breaks, the dog runs out of leash at the cones and never gets access to my agitator, okay? And so, no matter what weak posture Callie shows, if she's fooling with the baby, if she's bent over, if she's putting groceries in the car, the dog always feels like he's going to be limited on the choices he can make. Now, <clears throat> once he's shown control, then I'll have my agitator take an overtly violent stance and run at Callie or try to sneak up on her, right? Try to hurt her. Try to make it obvious that he's going to hurt her. And he's going to break that plane of where the uh, cones are, in which case that's when the dog should spring into action and you're probably going to get some real good bites off this because sitting here and having to wait and be patient, it really builds drive, it builds desire. Anything that you can't have, that's what you want more. So these denial drills like this, they really build a lot of drive and they help your dog jump up and take a good, deep, hard bite. So let's get to, let's get to work here. Alright guys, so listen, here's our, here's our parking lot drill. This happens in real life, you know. The mom gets busy and she's having to placate this child. We had to pinch Callie's baby to make him cry because he never cries. <laughs> so we pinched him a little bit. Now he's over there squalling in that uh, baby character. Kane, he gets nervous because the baby's crying. Callie's busy watching the baby so she can't be watching Kane. So listen, if you don't have a dog that's got good control, what he's going to do here is he's going to break to go over there after that bad guy right that's why we have the cones is we want Kane to realize that even when it doesn't seem like Callie's paying attention even when she's busy and even if there are some bad characters in the parking lot with you if they don't act overtly aggressive if they're not showing immediate signs of violence he's not allowed to be protective of his mama which is the thing he gets up every day and and, and hopes he gets to do Okay, so we got a bad guy and he's milling around in the back. We got a mama over there uh, trying to, to make that baby quit crying after I pinched it, right? And then this dog's just waiting to do his job. But the cue to do his job is the guy being overtly violent. 
And so when the guy's overtly violent, oh, oh, there he goes. Oh, now Kane can fight with him. Oh, then Callie can let go of the baby and go over there and get her dog. And she can start telling that guy, hey, get out of here. You better get out of here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you better get out of here. And now, see, right there, my agitator gets back behind those cones, right? And when he gets back behind the cones, Callie's pretty safe, you know, because she's not that strong. Uh, she's pretty safe. Uh, she doesn't have to worry about her dog being dirty and getting a bite. My agitators, he's, you know, he's pretty safe. Everybody's safe. It's a fun drill. Kane's had a good time. Uh, and uh, somebody ran over and pinched that baby again so it would cry so we could get another take. This is awesome. Okay, guys, now remember what this drill is about. You say it's a way to practice having your dog show self control. Everything I do is about impulse control because, to be honest with you, everything that happens that's wrong with a dog's almost always got impulse control as a component. So there's Matt, and he's just milling about, and uh, he doesn't have to worry about a dirty dog because a dog can't get past those dang cones. So just imagine you're in the parking lot, and there's somebody, and the dog knows he's up to no good, but he's just kind of milling about. He's not doing anything that's really, really wrong yet. But at the moment the guy becomes overtly violent, ah! then the dog can attack him, right? Look at that. Now you want to run up on him and you want to be fighting with him, you know, and you want to make this a big deal. You know, try to make it as realistic as possible, right? Pressure your dog and then, you know, you slip him at sleeve and that becomes a reward, right? Now high level competition dogs, this is more complicated than that, but for Callie's dog, this is a great drill and it keeps him in good enough shape so that he's trustworthy and he can go to the Kroger or the Safeway or whatever. Okay, so let's just imagine Callie's out at the park and she's just walking her dog, you know. Uh, and as she comes back up to the parking lot and she wants to get in the car, you know, there's some strange character. Like that one right there. Okay. And, uh, you know, he's on the path. Well, listen, that could turn, you know, that could go south for, for a lady and her baby real quick. And so what Callie's going to do, she's going to park her baby stroller. Right? And she's going to put her dog on a downstay. But since we're in the training phase, we're going to put our dog on a downstay with a tether. Okay? So that Callie knows that while she's getting her baby ready and uh, while she's getting her stuff in the truck, that she's well guarded and protected by her protection dog. Okay, so now while, you know, here's the thing with moms, they're just absent-minded and they got babies crying and stuff. Like I said, you know, every time I have to turn this camera off, I got to go over and pinch that dang baby again so it'll cry, you know, because we're after realism out here at Cabin Creek Kennel. All right, but so Callie's got her dog this time. She's got a dog named Tig. Look at him. He's awesome, right? But he's posted up guarding her and Will, right? Now here is my nefarious character, but now notice he's behind the cones. Now, the dog doesn't know about those cones because we just put those cones out here today. So, my nefarious character can be milling about out there, and my dog over here can be watching him, right? He's at, he's just imagine, he's in the parking lot, and he knows this guy's up to no good. But the problem is, you can't just have your dog bite people because he thinks that they're going to eventually do something, uh, you know, that's, that's not very civil. So, all we can do is we can wait and teach the dog that the only way to, to get to do what he wants to do, which is to bite that sleeve, is for the person to be overtly violent. So if the person, yes, now there we go, good, good. Fight with him, there you go, fight with him. Tell us, help him, Callie, help him. You know, chase him off. They got dogs got to protect that baby. There you go, good, good, good. And then you fight with him for a while, and then you let him uh, win that sleeve, you know? And the dog gets to do his job, he gets rewarded, it's a lot of fun, and this has a lot of real world practicality to it. Okay, so here's Callie's dog, Tig, and uh, he's just waiting. You know, he's sitting there waiting to protect her. He's waiting to get a chance. You know, that guy's milling about over there, and he knows, he just knows deep in his heart that guy's up to no good, but he can't do anything until the guy is overtly violent, which is happening right about now. Boom, right? Okay, now he gets to fight with him. Callie runs over there, and she's helping him. You know, good boy. Good. He's got to learn to fight, carry on. She's going to get a hold of his leash. She's going to yell at the guy. Good boy. And then she's going to make Tig let go. And if this guy's got any sense, he's going to run away. There you go. Good boy, Tig. Uh, what a fine animal. All right. See you guys next week.